Hello and a very warm welcome to my dear students in today's class. Let's understand the current events with the help of MCQs in such a manner that you will be able to crack your PSC 2024. Why do I say this? Because I have covered thoroughly whatever news is the freshest of the fresh. Now, first of all, let us consider the following pairs. We have to match the art forms with the associated state. Kavad, Rajasthan, Pattachitra, Odisha, Kali Ghat painting from Kolkata. How many pairs given above is or are correctly matched? Very few of you must have heard about Kavad. It belongs to Rajasthan, specifically Udaipur. Patta Chitra belongs to Odisha and Kali Ghat painting, which is also actually inspired by Patta Chitra, belongs to Kolkata. Why it is known as Patta Chitra, fun fact, is because the storytellers used cloth to roam around with these cloth and with the help of the painting on the cloth, they used to tell these stories. So they were known as Patua. And after a period of time, their paintings came to be known as Patta Chitra. So it was very famous in Odisha. Similarly, Kali Ghat paintings are inspired by Patta Chitra. So all three pairs are correctly matched. That is why C is the correct answer. Why have I asked you this question? This is a beautiful painting which is installed in the new parliament building. This is known as Parv. This is a covered painting. It consists of 10 festivals which are being celebrated through folk art it is shown on the covered painting and these include patta chitra kali ghat style and paper mache as well the covered this painting used to be done on cloths but after a period of time because the cloths used to deteriorate and affected the painting it started being done on wooden shrine box and this shrine box is made up of mango and salam trees the wood from it. This is generally done by Kumavats. Kumavats actually a community of carpenters who belong to Sutar or Jangir caste and Jangir specifically Brahmin Jangirs. As you can see behind me I have this covered painting. All right. Moving ahead to the next one that is another important painting Patta Chitra. This originated in the 12th century belongs to Odisha and it is generally done by the traditionally done by the Mahapatra or Maharanas. This is a artist caste in Odisha. As you can see behind me, the Patta Chitra. It's a beautiful painting and it is associated generally with the Jagannath Puri cult. The base of the cloth is first prepared by using chalk and the gum. Gum is, uh, we get the gum from tamarind seeds. And when we do this, what happens? The tensile strength of the cloth increases plus it becomes very absorbent as in the colors which I will paint on this cloth now will get absorbed quickly. The borders of the painting is traditionally done first. First I will do the borders then I will move inside. After that I will roughly draw sketches and once that is done uh, of course I will use primarily I will use colors such as white, red, yellow and black. Once that is done finishing is done by using strokes from black brush. After all this is done, I will put the painting over charcoal fire so that it gets absorbed better and the permanence is there and then I will add lacquer as well for glossiness. Now comes Kali Ghat painting which originated in the Bengal presidency mid 19th century and it was inspired by Patachitra as I already told you. There are two types, Oriental which is more Indian in nature. It has the major themes of Krishna and Durga. It also used to show secular themes such as from Indian freedom struggle. And the themes from the life of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as well as his disciples were also shown. Occidental actually belongs to European times which uh, European culture is shown. Day to day lives are shown here. Now the brushes generally are made up of squirrels uh, hair and of course goat hair. Colors are taken out from natural ingredients such as black which comes from soot of the lamp. Red and greens come from flowers and leaves and yellow comes from turmeric. Alright, so this is the day-to-day -day life which has been shown in the Kali Ghat painting. Next, with respect to the Protection of Children from Sexual Offences Act, consider the following statements. In order to answer this question, you must be very well aware of this act because I have already taught this in today's episode, in today's class of why hasn't Bridge Bhushan Singh, has, why hasn't he been arrested? Do watch that. It's a woman-centric act. Section 29 of the act allows the court to presume the accused guilty unless proven innocent. Second is that the maximum jail term could be extended up to three years 
and the burden of proof lies on the accused and not the prosecution. So we have to select here how many statements is or are not correct. All right. So let us see the statements first. First statement told us that it is a woman centric act. No, it is a gender neutral act. That means the victim and the perpetrator could belong to either a man or a female gender. And that is why it's not just women centric. Even boy child who have been abused, they will be protected and women offenders will be punished. Section 29 of the act actually allows the court to presume the accused guilty unless and until proven innocent. And that is why the burden of proof lies on the accused and not the prosecution. If A has prosecuted or alleged offense under POXO on B, the burden of proof to prove that I have not done so lies on B and not A. A here is the prosecution and B here is the accused. So second and fourth are correct. First is not correct. Maximum jail term could be up to five years. So first and third are not correct. Second and fourth are correct. If we have to select the not correct ones, two statements only are going to be the correct answer. Elimination method is not used anymore. Now Bridge Bhushan Singh has said that under the leadership of Ayodhya Sears, he will ensure that the law, POXO, is changed. Now, as I told you, it's a gender neutral act. It is a victim centered piece of legislation. That means whatever the process will be there, it will take care of the victim, not to put that victim under any sort of stress. Child friendly mechanisms are there. Child is a person who is below the age of 18 years and also completed the age of 18 years, 18 years or less, according to this particular act. It defines penetrative and non-penetrative offenses, sexual harassment and pornography as well. Section 7, which is read with Section 8 of the POXO says that the punishment will not be less than 3 years and extend extendable up to 5 years. So, so the range is minimum 3, maximum 5. POXO Act here, the burden of proof lies with the accused, lies on the accused. I've already told you what does it mean. And section 29 of the POXO Act says that when a person is prosecuted for committing a sexual offense under the POXO Act against the minor, then the special court trying the case shall presume the court to be a court uh, that is special court will presume that the accused is guilty and not innocent. Next, consider the following pairs. We have to match the mandals of the Rigveda along with the associated sage. Fifth mandal, sage Grihat Samad. 7th Mandal, Sage Atri, 10th Mandal, Sage Somdevta and 2nd, Sage Vashisht. So we have to select how many, uh, this could also become, uh, you know, not very relatable because it belongs to the elimination technique method. So first is option A. Mandal, 5th Mandal is written by Sage Atri. Alright, so A we have 2. Let us eliminate it may be that one or two questions could be there. A three, these three are having A's two. Next, we have another uh, pair that we have to see. Seventh mandal. Seventh mandal is actually by Sage Vashisht. All right. Seventh mandal is by Sage Vashisht. So by using elimination technique, we can get rid of this and this because this will be the correct answer. Two, four, three, one. I have eliminated. Maybe if we are lucky enough, we will get one elimination trick. All right. So this is the question. I have already given you the answer with the help of elimination technique and UPSC might not use it, but still let's do it. Let's hope for the best. Saptarishi statue collapse. That is why this question has been asked. Saptarishi actually means seven sages of India. So 10 books actually refer to mandalas in Rig Veda, which consist of 10,600 verses and 1,028 hymns. This is not penned down. The mandals were compiled by Ved Vyasa. Here the chief deity is Lord Indra. And this actually was the mandalas were written from 1500 to 1200 BCE. 35% of the hymns and 25% of the Rig Ved were written by Angiras, the sages. And the other gods which are here is the sun god Surya and fire god Varuna. We have Lord Shiva to the mountain and storm god Rudra as well. The Gayatri month is a part of Rig Veda. And behind me, I have, I will of course give you the PDF. So you will see which mandal is written by whom. All right. So you can figure it out in the PDF. Moving ahead. With respect to public interest litigation, consider the following statements. 
the concept of locus locus standi applies loosely in the cases related to pil it is not defined in the indian constitution but it is explicitly defined in the indian penal code and pils must be filed only before the honorable supreme court of india under article 32 of the constitution of india here we have to select which how many of the statements not which is or are correct the concept of locus standi locus standi means what that you in what legal capacity are you bringing any case to the court so in case of pils locus standi is relaxed even if i do not have a direct interest in any outcome of the case but if i see that a group or any public section is not going to you know exercise their rights properly i might bring the, that case to the court so locus standi becomes relaxed that's why we see so many pils so by using concept as well as using the regular examples we can answer this question actually it is not defined in the indian constitution neither it is in any other statutory provision first is correct second is incorrect pil may be filed only before the honorable supreme court no because it's an extension of writs and writs can be filed before the supreme court as well as the high court under article 226 so uh, as we see that first is correct second and third are not correct that means one statement only is the correct answer delhi high court has dismissed the pil challenging notification allowing ex exchange of rupees 2000 notes without prior notice without sorry id proof so that is why i asked you this question pil is actually a form of litigation in order to safeguard or enforce public interest this could be done by any person who is going to the court in good good faith not to gain anything or profiteer from anything so it may include pecuniary interest as well just for the good of the community pil hasn't been defined in any indian statute uh, remember that because this is this could be asked in your preliminary examination in the janata dal versus h s choudhury case of 1993 pil was interpreted by the honorable supreme court saying it is a legal action which is started in a court of law for the enforcement of public general interest all right where the public or a particular class of the public some interest that affects their legal right or liabilities all right that is why we see so many pils any individual or organization can file a pil in their standing capacity the concept of locus standi has been relaxed here and pils are extension of writ jurisdiction i have already told you this so let's skip this you just read it in the pdf i have already told you how many of the following countries are a dialogue partner of the shanghai cooperation organization we know the member countries we might know the observers but we also have to know about the dialogue partners upsc can do that cambodia turkey nepal sri lanka belarus choose the correct answer use using the following codes all five are a part of the dialogue partner mechanism all right so india is to host the sco summit in a virtual format on july 4th and it is a permanent intergovernmental international organization which came into existence as shanghai cooperation organization in the year 2001 date is june 15 before that it was known as the shanghai 5 it comprises of the countries when it started it comprised of kazakhstan china kyrgyzstan russia tajikistan and uzbekistan before uzbekistan joined it was known as the shanghai 5 shanghai 5 were actually an outcome of the border arrangement border management because of the collapse of soviet union so that china doesn't have any issues with the other central asian countries shanghai 5 was uh, shanghai 5 came into existence all right and initially it was focused on mutual inter regional uh, efforts to curb terrorism as well as separatism this could be a very fine prelim statement in september 2003 the heads of the sco member states signed a 20 year program of multilateral trade and economic cooperation and in the astana summit of 2017 india and pakistan became permanent members eight countries are enjoying the status of permanent members india kazakhstan china kyrgyzstan russia pakistan tajikistan and uzbekistan there are four observer countries afghanistan belarus iran and mongolia iran has been approved as a permanent member but right now the website says that only eight are there they will be uh, of course um if we talk about iran they will be gathering there as well dialogue partners include azerbaijan armenia cambodia nepal turkey as well as sri lanka six countries so remember that all right consider the following statements with respect to kosovo 
It declared independence from Serbia in 2009. India was one of the first countries to recognize the statehood of Kosovo and all the NATO members recognize Kosovo as a sovereign country. Here we have to select the correct statement. All right. So it declared independence from Serbia in the year 2008, not 2009. India has not recognized it as a country till now because of its relations with Russia. Russia actually is a supporter of Serbia and Serbia uh, is not recognizing Kosovo as an independent sovereign country. So India because of that also may, may be doing so. And not all the NATO members actually recognize it. Only about 25 plus out of 31 NATO member countries. So first is incorrect, second is incorrect and third is also incorrect. As we have to select, let's see how many are correct. None of the statements are correct. All right. So NATO soldiers on guard in Kosovo served town after clashes. That is why this question has been asked. Kosovo is in southeastern Europe and it shares its borders with Montenegro, Serbia, as you see, Montenegro, Albania, Macedonia, Serbia. And it is a landlocked country as um, it has been uh, recognized by certain members of the UN as well. It declared its independence from Serbia only in the year 2008. 98 of the 193 United Nations member states recognize it as a sovereign country. 26 of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization members do it and 22 European Union member states do it. India has denied its as in India has said that we do not recognize it as a full state. All right. Now, next question with respect to the Rafale fighter aircraft, consider the following statements. It has a range of 3700 kilometers. It is a twin engine fighter jet and it can operate from both an airbase and on land and an aircraft carrier. So if you must be reading about Rafale, you can answer this question very well. And here we have to select, let's see what do we have to do. We have to see how many is or are correct. All right. So let us see how many is or are correct. First is correct. Range is correct. Definitely. It's a twin engine fighter jet and it can be launched from both land as well as aircraft carrier base. All right. So all three statements are correct. Option C will be correct over here. Now, this question has been asked because recently for IAF Rafales flew, flew along a long range mission for over six hours in the Indian Ocean region. This is today's news itself. The Rafale is a twin jet. That means two jets are there and it is a fighter aircraft. It has variants which can be launched from land as well as aircraft carrier. It has shown its combat capabilities in Afghanistan, Libya, Syria, Iraq and Mali. It is fitted with avionics, radars and weapon system. It is ahead of the F-16S which is used by Pakistan and China's JF-20. This is a fifth generation stealth aircraft. That means it cannot be easily intercepted by radars. It has a range of 3700 km. It also comes with a host of advanced weapons. All right. And if we talk about India, India signed a deal with France in September 2016 to acquire 36 Rafale aircrafts. And we have completed our package. It was of approximately 59,000 crore rupees. And India, as you see, locks haunts with China on, uh, at the ADC more so often. So it is generally seen that in Ambala, in other regions of the China LAC border, India and China LAC, it is deployed. Moving ahead, the government of India launched the National Tobacco Control Program during the 8th 5-year plan, 9th, 10th or 11th. The correct answer is 11th 5-year plan. And why do we ask this question? Because today is World's No Tobacco Day. All right, so you, you must be understanding how we connect the dots. Moving ahead, let us talk about the explanation. See, today is World's no tobacco day and it was ex it was actually passed by the resolution for this was passed by world health organization to celebrate world no tobacco day it was all done in 1987 because there was a lot of tobacco epidemic and the disease which was being caused by it in 1987 who resolution this on 7th of april 1988 said that we are going to observe a world no smoking day. So remember, 7th April is world no smoking day and 31st of May is world no tobacco day. And 1988's resolution this talked about world no tobacco day to be observed on 31st of May. All right. And if we talk about India, the dangers of using tobacco, the business practices of tobacco companies, these all are recognized in India and it works accordingly. What WHO is doing to fight tobacco epidemic and what people around the world are doing, we are also 
you know, drawing our attention to this. National Tobacco Control Program was launched in the year 2007-2008 in the 11th five-year plan in order to create awareness about the harmful impacts that tobacco consumption does to reduce the production as well as supply of tobacco, ensure the effective implementation of the provisions under the act of COTPA, also help the people to quit it and to facilitate the implementation of WHO guidelines as well. Right now we are celebrating, India is celebrating World No Tobacco Day with the theme, this is the theme, remember, for India, tobacco free youth. According to Global Youth Tobacco Survey, tobacco use among adolescents, that is from 13 years of age to 15 years in 2019, was 8.5%. But in 2010, it was 14.6%, so it has declined by 42%. Also, if we talk about the other studies, other studies also tell us the risky pictures. Global Burden of Disease study says that over 1.2 million deaths due to smoking and secondhand smoke in India happened in 2019. WHO has also estimated that 1.35 million deaths occurred every year because of tobacco use in India. So this was all the news curation for today. I hope this helped you and I will send you the uh, PDF on my Telegram channel. Thank you so much for watching.